Cool. Okay, so welcome back to our Revive Newport YouTube channel. Uh, this channel is here to explore what we're doing together as the Church of Newport to love the community. And this is our 35th video that we have posted. Um, and there are loads of videos there just explaining all the projects that we run, uh, stories about um, how things have gone, and interviews like this with some of our key workers. And today uh, is one of those days. We're going to talk to Charlie, who he manages one of our projects, which is the living room which if you want to know any more about, there will be a link in the description below to some of our other videos about how we set it up and the bookshop and all the kind of aspects of that. But today we want to find out a little bit more about the lady that is Charlie Hollis. Um, we'd, we'd be interested to know um, kind of how it all started, you know, um, tell us about your, your childhood before you were even on the Isle of Wight. Yeah, so I was born in Eastbourne, East Sussex, so I've always been a seaside girl. Um, I, I'm going to be brutally honest, I had, didn't have the best childhood in, in the world. Um, I had an Iranian father and a, a, a British mother and I had four younger siblings and um, my dad, where he was Iranian, was very heavy handed. He was very abusive and he did he did beat me quite a bit to be honest with you and um, so I ran away from home when I was 15 years old naive to where I was going to go and what I was going to do and um, fortunately they got picked up by an older couple that were friends of the family and they became my guardians completely let down by the social services and um, coming from having so many rules and being so disciplined to having no rules and no disciplines mm. I became a bit of a, a wild child so to speak I just <laughs> I was I was very naughty <laughs> very naughty right, okay. yeah, yeah. We, want to talk, we want to know yeah. that more stories yeah. but we'll leave that for yeah. now I think yeah. maybe um, keep it um, PG yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and then you at some point you moved to the Isle of Wight yeah so um, again God definitely does use the troubled. Um, I, I met a man and he was in prison on the Isle of Wight and I was homeless and I had nowhere to go, I had nowhere mm. to live and he got out of Camp Hill prison and suggested that we just move to the Isle of Wight. So we did, we got on the train, we bumped the train. Thankfully we spoke to the train, the guy that does the tickets and he gave us a travel warrant to Portsmouth and then we just had enough money to get to the Isle of Wight to get the ferry over with 3p and a suitcase full of second-hand clothes and um, we got here on a Friday and the job centre had just closed so he couldn't get his um, his gyro and um, he said don't worry because he believed in God I didn't at this point and um, we went to St Mary's Church and Rye down the high street knocked on the vicar's door and he just gave us a hundred quid to stay somewhere for two nights so mm. That's cool. how I ended up on the island. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, and then at some point along the, um, the journey between that and you becoming the manager of the living room, um, you became a Christian at some point? I did, yeah. yeah. How, how did that? Um... Well, we, w we went back to that said church and it was a mother in Sunday and yeah. I leant against a post and um, I got told off and I cried. and. Um, but we thanked the vicar kindly for his money and um, my partner at the time turned around and said, this isn't church, follow me. And we ended up in two, in Tony and Sue Anderson's yeah. church at Ride Elam. And yeah. they were just the loveliest, happiest people. And although they did help us, I didn't really believe in God. Like I, I loved that they were lovely people, but I didn't believe in God. Mm. And so we went from pillar to post and we moved around a lot. And um, my said partner went back into prison. And I just sort of one night cried out to God and said, OK, if you're really real, then you prove yourself to me. Mm. And I wouldn't say that now being a Christian, but I did <laughs> back then. And at that very moment in time, I had a knock on the door and it was Norman and Joan Vise. Um, and they brought the biggest bunch of flowers I'd ever seen. And she just sort of cuddled me while I cried. And they got me on the Alpha course with Brian Harley. And, mm. and I think that's the day that I actually really did believe in God and became a Christian so yeah yeah cool it's been good a journey been a journey yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Journey. and we could spend a long time yeah, oh, talking more yeah. about it but um for the sake of this video keeping it short I guess relatively speaking um and then you became the manager of the living room what made you apply 
to, to, to work here for I've always, Revive? I've always been a hard worker and I worked at New Look for five years and I was the best in the country. God gave me great favour. I was the best in the country at many different things and I was able to pray with customers, with staff members mm. and I had such a great time. I, did, I didn't want the job to be honest with you. But yeah. Pete Luther, I'd never met before, <laughs> turned up at my church and gave a speech and said that they were opening up the living room and what it was going to stand for and what they wanted it to be mm. and who they wanted to run it. And um, somebody who's just like a mum to me sort of nudged me and I was like, laughed it off. And it came to the closing date of the job and I just felt such an urge to fill out the application form, which is 30 pages long, may I add. <laughs> Almost, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And um, I filled it out in one night and sent it and thought, well, if I don't want it, I can turn it down sort of thing. And, and yeah, that's why I applied for yeah, it. We yeah, we applied it. We interviewed four people and, and uh, obviously prayed about it. And just we just all felt that you were the, the lady for the job. And I think uh, uh, time has uh, proved that, that that's yeah. a bit true. Yeah. So, so what do you, what, what's, what do you uh, like most about the living room or where do you see it and where do you see it going? I like the community aspect, I like unity, I like the fact that that we are able to shape people's lives, that mm. there's so many lonely people out there and they, the GPs say that loneliness is a bigger killer than cancer mm. and I can't believe it and so to be able to befriend somebody mm. and to become a familiar face, to be able to pray with them in their darkest hour, to be able to rejoice with them when they are joyful and they've received good news. It's an mm. absolute privilege. It's mm. hard work, it's mm -hmm. really hard work, but yeah. I thrive off of that, so, mm. yeah, I so love it's it. all it's yeah. all good. And where do you see, see, see the revive the living room going? What's your... I think it's gonna be massive, to yeah. be honest with you. I think I see us getting in, in aspects of all people's life from when they were born to when they die, so to speak, mm. you know, to, to take in young toddlers into, to old people's homes, to taking off the tax for sanitary towels, for having drop-off points and collection points for sanitary towels, for opening up more living rooms across the island, maybe even open the garage where we can team up young boys with ro men, male role models yeah. and and have you know strong role models, maybe have a beauty salon that we call the bathroom or the spa that we can mm. team up young women with strong lady role models. Yeah. And I, I honestly think it's limitless. Um, but whatever God wants us to do, I'm yeah. sure we'll be able to. Yeah. So we're not just limited to just doing the, the projects that we're doing. We're here to try and make life for people that live in Newport better um, by giving them places to come, places to hang out, places to talk, places to share. Uh, but then also uh, with specific people groups, right from the very old to the very young, um, uh, just finding ways of, of helping people that are struggling. Um, sometimes... I really wish I didn't know um, mm. the hurt and the pain and the suffering that are going on with people that live in our town and in our community, um, you know, uh, and it's really heartbreaking really to hear people's stories and what they're going through, so uh, I think, um, yeah, we're committed to finding ways of making making life better and I think that's cool, yeah. you know, and I think as we continue uh, to work with people like Charlie and the rest of our team, I can really see um, that us as the Church of Newport really making an impact and picking up things where uh, things have been dropped left, right and centre uh, by the people that um, have been doing it in our community as money has been a massive issue as we pick things up as we, and as we, um, yeah, bring Jesus to people in practical ways. So thanks for watching, uh, if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you in a video next month. Okay, take care. Hi. God bless. God bless. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Are you happy Perfect. with that? Yeah. Hopefully I didn't ravel on too much. Yeah, perfect.